Hello and welcome to the Advanced Additive Scenes tutorial. What I'm going to show you today is what Advanced Additive Scenes does and how to break up a scene for use by a team. So I've loaded up the Angry Bots tutorial here and that's a complete project with good hierarchy organization and it's available in every Unity 4.0 distribution so you should have this installed automatically with Unity. So what I've done first of all is I've switched it over to text scene saving mode. So if you go edit project settings then editor, you can switch this from mix to force text and it takes a little while so I've already done that. And what I want to show you right now is how Unity looks when it tries to merge scenes by two different people um, working on the same scene. So this is this is the tutorial here. I haven't done any changes but I'm going to do one right now. So I'm going to do a quick search here on all these cubes in the scene. So I'm going to select them all. And what are these cubes? Well these cubes are actually just colliders. So they don't actually render in the scene. What they do is they just stop people from walking uh, through the different um, kind of boxes. So this is to prevent the player from sort of running into that geometry there that you see on the screen here. So what I want to do is I'm going to just remove the mesh collider or the mesh render since it's not needed and I'll move, remove the mesh filter since that's also not needed. Now that I've done that you can see there's no changes it looks exactly the same and I'm going to um, save this scene as Angry Bots No Cubes. Now by doing this I'm going to sort of mimic a typical change that um, one of the people on your team would do. So I mean again that's not a huge change. Um, it's changed a lot of objects in the scene but logically it's really only a single change. So if I were to load this up here, no cubes and angry bots and I compare the two, you're going to see that there's a bunch of different file um, IDs that have changed and a bunch of different, you know, unreadable um, global unique IDs. So all these here, like this 7C F7 and 56A4, um, typical um, mergers like Beyond Compare even, which is a very good one, will not be able to merge a change like this. So if you had another change and then this one as well, chances are that it's going to modify this file in the same spot and you're going to lose one of those changes. So this is a scenario that people kind of run into all the time where it's like, oh, someone's changed a scene and they've done something and then someone else has changed the scene. And when they submit it to version control, or, you know, even if you're not using version control, you put on Dropbox, it's like, then you're totally, you're totally hooped. There's no way to merge those changes. So what I wanted to show you is how we can use the Additive Scenes plugin to sort of solve that issue. And I'm going to go through a very simple scenario now. Now this, um, this scene itself has very good organization as I've mentioned before. So there's a bunch of different objects in the scene and they're all under these headings. Like sounds now contain just objects with sounds. So only, you know, a sound engineer would want to change that um, object. Static here is all of the um, visuals in the, in the scene. So static means it's not moving. So all the visuals there, like the level, would be under the static object. Uh, Semi-static are, you know, things that can move or are sort of there. Um, so the doors are an example of a, a semi-static object. So if I go over here, it's like this door is going to move when I when I go into it, but otherwise it sort of stays in its, in its own uh, space. So I'm going to start right now by um, putting all the enemies and uh, semi-static and sounds into their own sub-scenes. And I'm going to do that by just selecting them going uh, game object create other coding jar subscene and I'm going to create from the selected objects. Now I like organizing my stuff so I'm going to make a new folder here called subscenes 
and I selected the enemies, so I'm going to call this enemies. And you can see now that there's a new object with a subscene on it, and all the enemies are underneath that game object. If I click on enemies, you can see here that it's under the subscenes folder. That's a new scene. I'm going to do the same thing with sounds. Create other from selected. Save. And I'm going to do the same thing with semi static. semi-static. So now you can see that visually there's no difference in this scene. The only difference is how they're laid out. So all these objects now live under these subscenes, and these subscenes now contain the data. So if I were to save this off, all those subscenes get saved, and then I could load up one of these subscenes. And now you can see just the enemies and all the enemy placement live in this subscene. Same with the sound. Just the sounds live in this subscene. Yet when I load it all together, they'll end up showing up all together in this main scene here. So, I mean, we can see that all the enemies are still here. And when I play the game, it's going to end up playing exactly as it did before. Etc. So, um, so the reason you want to do this is that, for instance, your game designer can own the enemy's subscene here. And typically only a game designer is going to place where the enemies are. So if a game designer owns that subscene, there's going to be no merge conflicts because only the game designer will be submitting that subscene to the repository or copying it to Dropbox or doing whatever. Uh, that's going to save you from any sort of merge conflicts in there. In the next tutorial, I'm going to show you a more advanced scenario with the uh, Additive Scenes plugin and just kind of show you uh, some things that you're going to encounter. And the new version of the Advanced Additive Scenes is actually going to solve a bunch of issues for you. So join me in the next tutorial. Thanks.